Hey, what's up Canada? The only reason that any of you are watching this video right now is because you've got this question about what is on the Canadian Electrical Interprovincial IP examination. Probably freaking out about it and you're coming here for some questions. Well, to be honest, I don't know what's going to be on the exam. But what I am going to be able to go and show you is how many exam questions you are going to go and get in each topic as well as what are each of these questions going to go and be about. And before we even get into any of that, just let me spend a couple of quick seconds on explaining where the IP even goes and comes from. First of all, we've got a couple of documents that you should be familiar with. One of these is going to be my NOA, my National Occupational Analysis, and this just basically is a review of what an electrician is in Canada, does in Canada, and should know in Canada. From the NOA, another document is developed. This is going to be the RSOS, the Red Seal Occupational Standard. And that's going to say if an electrician should be able to work on three-phase transformers as defined in the NOA, then therefore, this is what we need to train them about. What is a Y transformer? What is a Delta transformer? Etc. And so it is made by the Red Seal Standards Association. And then out of that RSOS and the NOA, each of the provinces is then going to go and use that to develop their provincial curriculum, which is going to be anywhere from, uh, well, I shouldn't say from one to four years, but from three to four levels of training that they're going to go and have. And ultimately, at the end of that provincial curriculum, or maybe if you're coming in just as a challenge, you are then going to go and write the Red Seal Interprovincial Examination which is the IP exam. Now the IP exam is developed directly off of my RSOS and my NOA. So all of these documents play a huge part in development of that exam. There is a guide online from Red Seal that tells us exactly what's going to go and be on this exam. So we're going to jump over there right now. Right now we're taking a look at this website over here, which is my redseal.ca. You should have been on this website before at some point. I'm just going to navigate through really quickly. You can pause and follow along. We'll go to the English site. And then we're going to go and take a look at Red Seal exams. And we're going to go down and take a look at exam counseling sheets. Once we're at exam counseling sheets, we're just going to kick over to construction electrician. And once we're inside a construction electrician, it's going to go show us this handy little chart. And the handy little chart tells us how many questions we're going to have out of each of these five blocks for a total of 100 questions that's going to go and be on your IP. Somewhat helpful, you know, we know we're going to have a certain amount that's going to be about services or motors and motor control, but it's still not very detailed. We can go much more granular if we go up to this link, hit the Red Seal Occupational Standard, and down here, we've got the RSOS, which was last ratified in 2015 by these guys over here, the Canadian Council of Directors of Apprenticeship, which is where all of our schools and provincial uh, curriculum are all going to be governed by. Let's go down, though, into a bunch of the different products or the things that they're going to go and give us. There's the RSOS over there. There's a poster that's in short form trade profile that's going to go and tell us about what you should be able to go and do and what we want to go to is this document right over here construction electrician red seal examination preparation guide it's 121 pages it's going to take a couple of seconds to go and load last time it didn't load i might have to go and hit refresh i'm an impatient man right now so we're just going to go and wait for this thing uh, it's slowly on uh loading up there perfect would you look at that we are loaded now it's the Red Seal Examination Preparation Guide based on the RSOS from 2015. Don't let that scare you. I know we're in 2020. Uh, if 2020 doesn't scare you alone, the fact that this is five years old should not scare you as well. Let's roll down into the exam prep guide. And the exam prep guide is going to go and have a whole pile of pages. We're going to skip past a bunch of that. There's cool stuff inside there, but not enough for us to look at. What we want to look at is going to be these levels over here. This is going to be a pie chart of your exam waiting, which is going to be the same thing as what we saw before. We got this MWA that stands for major work area, common occupational skills, and that 11% of the questions are going to be on that. Well, if it's a 100 question exam, that means that we have got 11 questions that are going to be out of section A. We're going to roll down here a little bit further. And now we are going to go and find task matrix and weightings. And it's a lot to kind of look over, but it tells us a couple of things. First of all, block A is going to go and be that 11% that we are going to go and have. And then if I take a look at my task one, I see that task one is going to go and be 25% right over there. Oh, well, that's a marker, not a highlighter. We'll just erase that. Uh, we see that this is going to go and be 25% over here of 11%. So what we can do is we can go and take 11 questions and we can find 25% of that. You know, then we find 17% of that. We're going to find 17% of that. 
And so I did that all just through Excel because it's going to go and do an auto calculate. See, if I take a look at my block A, I've got a total of 11 questions. And I know that my first task, A.1, is 25%. And so I just went and put in a formula over here, which is going to go and kick me out to this value over here, 2.75 questions. Now, to be honest, you can't have three quarters of a question. We're going to have to do a little bit of rounding. And they've done a little bit of rounding in creating each of these percentages. So we're just going to always err on the side of questions. This would be our on the side of uh, having too many. This would be three questions, most likely that you are going to go and have on your exam out of A1. For sure, no less than two, but possibly up to three. Same with these ones here, no less than one, but probably about two. So I'd say this is going to be about three, this would be a two, this would be a two, this would be a two, and this one here might be a three. And then A6, there's going to be 0% weight, so there's going to be zero questions. That's going to be out of it. Taking all of that back and running through this entire test matrix chart. So for each one of these blocks over here, I've got my A block, B block, C block, D block, E block. Every single one is going to tell me 20% set the test. That's how many questions I have for D. And I'm going to take 41% of that. So I'm going to be able to figure out how many questions are on each. Now that's really cool because if we take a look at our individual topics, it kind of gives us a better idea. Not still necessarily a great idea, but it definitely gives us a better idea of what is going to be for each one. We can actually go much more granular than this as well to figure out what we're looking at. Let's go back to this A1, perform safety related functions. We said it was a quarter of the questions and when we took a look at that, we said that it was going to be two to three questions that we are going to go and have. So looking at that, I'm going to go and have two to three questions on these topics over here. The use of PPE that I'm going to go and have, maintaining a safe work environment, and performing lockout and tagout. Probably, my guess would be you're going to get a question for each. One on lockout tagout, you should know that. One on maintaining a safe work environment. One on use of PPE, hard hats, boots, gloves, glasses, face protection, all of that fun stuff. Now let's say that I didn't know what maintains a safe work environment means. What I can do is I can go in this document and I can go down to A1.02. We're just going to jump all the way down through here. We're scanning really quickly. I uh, scan too far. We'll just go up a bit. Uh, we're in C, B, too far. And I will get there eventually. Perfect. A.102. This is the one we were looking for. Maintain safe work environment. We said that the whole A1. A1 line was going to be three questions and out of this one I would expect to probably see one and so I'm going to go through here and I'm going to go and say do I understand how to do housekeeping uh, hazards can I identify them can I understand what barriers and signages are oh check this out here's a term that might be uh, applicable WIMIS do I know things about WIMIS do I know my physical limitations uh, follow safe work and then the bottom of that I'm going to go and have another thing that's going to be called my range of variables and the range of variables is really just going to be words that you should know and be able to go and understand so do you know what an arc flash is do you know how to prevent against that or how to protect against that liquid spills uh do you know what to do in case of electric shock uh, any substances asbestos mercury lead silica open holes confined spaces fire tripping hazard you should know just the basics about each of these. You should also understand what these are, caution and danger tapes, fences, steins, tags, etc. Looking inside of this section, maintaining a safe work environment would probably be stuff about WIMIS or maybe about where you're going to store fire extinguishers or utilize, you know, MSDS sheets or MDS sheets as they're called at this point, etc. Let's go back and take a look at a more detailed or a, you know, maybe a little harder block that we're going to go and take a look at. Let's take a look at our block C over here. And if I go back into my block C, I see that there's going to be nine questions. It's a 30 question block. And I've got a 30% weight out of C16, uh, which is going to be nine questions. Let's go over to that one. Uh, we're rolling through Bs and B11, B12, uh, C17. We're just a bit too far. And let's go up into C16. Now, C16 is going to be broken down into five sub-elements inside of C16. 
It's installing services, maintaining raceways, cables, and enclosures. And if I go take a look, I've got C16.1, C16.2, C16.3, C16.4, and C16.5 that I see across here. And after that, I move on. So if I've got a total of nine questions, it's probably going to be, well, if I round that to 10, I could say there's probably going to be about two questions per each one of these. Looking back into the first section over here, if I had to ask you as a apprentice or as a challenger, two questions on installing conductors and cables, they would be based around all of this. Can you determine the installation and select them? So cable sizing, could you cut, measure, assemble uh, cables inside of here when installing conductors and cables? Could you prepare them for termination? You know, this could mean stuff on preparing aluminum terminations over here. Uh, to terminate them, uh, have you, you know, put them around the screws in the right directions? Are you using stranded underneath uh, screws where you're only supposed to go and have solid, etc.? Uh, documentation, have you removed anything that's from there? Do you understand how these things are according to the NFC? So if it was going to go and be National Fire Code, that would be things like plenum ratings, etc. inside of there. And so once again, I go into the range of variables. And I'm going to go and say, do I understand the purpose, the equipment required for installation? This could be, you know, uh, what am I going to use to go and run cable? It's probably going to be a hole saw and auger. Installation environment in locations such as hazardous, wet, or outdoor, cat one, cat two. So it could be a question about, I've got a wet location and I need to go and use, you know, NMD, NMWU, or maybe LVT, which one would you select? And you'd have to be able to understand the types of cables and where to go and find those designations, your table 19 and your table D1 under your Canadian electrical code. So all of these sections can be broken down going back into this thing over here. You're gonna break them down by block and then percentage of the block and you can then have a rough idea how many questions are going to go and be on each one of these. And some of them you're gonna see are gonna be ridiculously light. C21 over here has only got one question on it. Am I going to spend a lot of time on that subject of C21 studying it? Well, let's take a look at what C21 is. Still rolling. C21, cathodic protection systems. At most, I'm going to go and have one question about cathodic protection. You should understand what cathodic protection is, but it would not be something that I'm going to go and spend a lot of time studying. So really just going through this guide, and I'm just going to scroll right up to the very top of this one once again, the Red Seal Exam Prep Guide for your Construction Electrician Interprovincial Exam. The biggest thing that it's going to do is it's going to allow you to figure out where you should be studying and roughly how many questions. Do you want to pass this exam? Then I suggest that you actually write your own or create your own IP examination off of this table. Go through, look at each of these subjects and write out, create three questions, create two questions, create two questions, etc. Go all the way through. Writing out and creating questions is going to give you a way better understanding about some of the stuff that can and cannot be asked. You might be freaking out right now thinking about some really vague concept to do with, you know, three phase open delta. But if you can't word a question for that inside of the applicable block, then chances are that it's not going to have been written by the committee as well, because all of these questions that are in here are written by a Red Seal committee. You can go back on the Red Seal site. They actually talk about how they gather a committee for a week and they have to go through it. So you're going to have a whole pile of instructors who all are going to go and have greatly inflated egos, just like mine, that are all going to be looking at this and uh, have to agree on questions. So it's going to have to be agreeable questions, not really odd ones. All right, cheers. Best of luck to you as you go out from this point to go and figure out what you're going to go and write for your interprovincial exam. Uh, I hope you do well. It gives you kind of a real basic guide and it just lets you have, if you're like me, you kind of want to know and be prepared for whatever it is you're going to walk into. So go through that Red Seal guide, study through it, figure out how many questions are on each subject, and then just take a wild guess. What would you ask in that, in that situation for those? there's a good chance that's probably going to be what the Red Seal Committee is also asking. Best of luck and yeah, enjoy.